Anyway, let's keep going. Let's start. Unimaginably horrific nature of the Vietnam War has somewhat made it a go-to occurrence for the use of satire. Films have often shown raw footage from the conflict overlaid with joyful music from the same era, which is to simulate the relative cluelessness and ignorance of mainstream culture, alongside the ironic nature of the melody when related to the subject matter of the lyrics. Some of the most famous comedic one-liners from Hollywood have been created through the topic of Vietnam, and this is because the comical elements are amplified due to the paradox of humor and war. Vietnam was the first war to be continuously caught on film and documented through the media, which gave many the false belief of perceptual understanding as they- I mean, none of that is bloody. I don't know why I can't show that fucking conflict, to be honest. Like, I'm a little worried about it, but it's like... watched from home. Others, however, were aware they were still completely oblivious to the real nature of war despite the frightful imagery, and that only those in the picture would truly understand the significance of what was taking place. On the fifth day of the battle for Hue, the Marines moved out from the fortified army compound that would start the original attack and advanced into the empty, abandoned buildings of what was Hue University. Contact. The first sniper shots ricochet around the thick walls of the building, taking the first casualties of the first squad. The snipers, maybe only two or three, are invisible in the buildings beyond the wall, but there is also a machine gun down the street to the left. The platoon leader has called... It ain't me! It ain't me! I'm the senator's soul, yeah! Sorry. <laughs> I almost wanna- Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta- We gotta- We gotta do that. I'm sorry. Planning. I have to play that. Like, I, I- I literally have to play that again. I'm in M60 with fucking Fortunate Son playing in the background as I fucking fly in. Hell yeah, brother. Yee yee. Get a goddamn dang bazooka really fucking hard, brother. <laughs> it ain't me. It ain't me. I'm no senator, so yeah. It's my favorite part, dude. It ain't me. It ain't me. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, I don't know why this this kills me every time, dude. Me. It ain't me. I'm no senator, so yeah. 
<laughs> oh, it's just so dumb. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. It's like the haircut and everything. It's just, it makes it so good. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Called his men forward. There is to be an assault. Much is left in shambles. The Marines advance, building after building. The North Vietnamese retreat, building after building, giving up nothing without a fight. Roger, that was a uh, that was some sort of rifle uh, grenade. It came all the way through the building, hit up, hit over the line. Have you, have you pushed forward? In the front ranks of the Marines, a man is suddenly wounded. Like he's alive he's and there's no the blood. He's alive and there's no blood. He's been hit in the eye with a shrapnel, but like, I just, I don't know if I can show that or not. No, from an enemy B-40 rocket. Despite the obvious pain, doctors later told him he will not lose the eye. And although the sound of the blast punctured his eardrum, he will not lose his hearing. This last segment of footage mainly focused on the 3rd Division of the U.S. Marine Corps, yet serving alongside them, and who in fact conducted the majority of the fighting on that particular day, was the 23rd Infantry Division of the U.S. Army, with Alpha Company leading the attack, and with a single platoon acting as the spear. Taking point for that platoon, meaning he would be the first into a firefight, was 21-year-old Andrew Brannan, who on the same day as the previously shown footage, would see his platoon leader get blown to pieces by a landmine. The following week, his actions in the field would later earn him the Bronze Star Medal for Courage Under Fire. He would serve a second tour of Vietnam in 1970 with the same unit, and spent the majority of his time patrolling downrange in the jungle, and where he would go on to earn his second Bronze Star for bravery in combat. He would lose a total of 14 comrades over his time in theater, and returned home with what would subsequently be diagnosed as severe PTSD. He would get discharged from the Army soon after, and began working for a utilities company in Covington, Georgia. Then tragedy struck. His 31-year-old brother and fellow Vietnam veteran committed suicide. A few months later, his older brother, who also served in Vietnam, was killed in a plane crash while on a training assignment in the Army. This sequence of events caused a mental breakdown, and Andrew locked himself away in his parents' house for almost two years. His family found it difficult to engage him in conversation since the war, but after the breakdown, he became manic. He frantically and loudly blurted out the details of his time in combat as if reading from a script. His father would eventually convince him to see a therapist at the local counseling center, who then transferred him to the Veterans Affairs Hospital in Georgia. He was diagnosed with a severe form of PTSD, which had just been added to the DSM, and he was declared 100% disabled. Friends and acquaintances all continued to notice bizarre and scary behavior, which ranged from hyper-conversation with himself to talking loudly at others right next to him as if they were 50 yards away. His family then went out on a limb and got him a dog the following Christmas, which remarkably appeared to lift not only Andrew's spirits, but his cognitive state as well. He called him Moses, and according to the reports, absolutely adored that animal. They would spend the majority of their time together in the woods, and Andrew appeared to be considerably more at peace, even when around other people. The future was beginning to look positive, but it didn't last long. On January 12th of 1998, Andrew was two weeks late in refilling his prescription, the longest he had gone without medication since oh, no. being diagnosed. On the way home from walking his dog, at exactly 5.38 p.m., his Toyota was clocked in at 98 miles per hour on a police radar. A less committed officer may have just let it go, but 22-year-old Deputy Kyle Dinkeller would not. His dash-mounted blue lights began flashing, and the Tacoma pulled over. Tragedy occurred over the following three minutes, as the police officer and veteran would engage in a ferocious firefight. Brannon drew an M1 carbine rifle out of his truck, got into a tactical stance, and began firing, at which point the deputy returned fire but was soon overwhelmed by his well-trained adversary. He was shot nine times, with a fatal shot being fired into his right eye. Brannon was shot once in the lower abdomen. He got back in his truck and sped off to his self-built primitive camp house just minutes from the shooting. He grabbed a tarp from the front porch, and then staggered off into the woods with his pet following close behind. 
He eventually collapsed under a tree. Law enforcement raided his cabin and the surrounding forest by dawn. Police dogs picked up his scent, and Brannon was found with his pet Moses still by his side. His wound was clotted by the cold, and his condition was stable. He was arrested and taken to the hospital, where he would admit to killing the officer. That is remarkably uh, less violent than what uh, cops do to people that kill one of their own nowadays, especially considering he was already in a cabin. I'm, I'm surprised they were able to uh, apprehend him without literally setting the cabin on fire, a fate that Christopher Dorner, of course, did not meet. Um, JPEG Mafia sampled this guy? Officer. A man committed a despicable and horrific crime, yet the origins of his undoing were clear for everyone to see, as they came from the harms done to him through his dedicated performance of assigned duties. Dozens of veterans, some of whom had never even met the defendant, would appeal for leniency, including servicemen from the Marines and Air Force. But their efforts were futile, as Brannon was found guilty of first-degree murder and rendered the sentence of death in late January of the year 2000. Capital punishment wouldn't even be considered in most circumstances. PTSD is a recognized psychiatric disorder that would often grant someone the same leniency as those diagnosed with a mental illness. So what makes this case different than the others? Why have dozens of veterans been shown mercy for similar and even worse crimes when Brannon received nothing of the sort? The answer will always be a source of speculation, but the majority would agree that a single element had the most impact. And that brings us to the medium of video and its psychological impact on the viewer. Video cameras reached consumer markets in the United States in the late 1970s, yet they were mainly used by families to document special moments, such as birthday parties or weddings. They had little impact on police work until the mid-80s, and became widespread by the 1990s. Audio and visual documentation is now the norm when encounters with suspects occur. And Okay. And this has been fuck? widely known to have a dramatic impact on oh, legal he's just proceedings. Literally shooting Compared at to a story, fucking... what the fuck? I don't know what that video is from, but it... that's a that's a body cam footage of him just like unloading into a car. Storytelling. The visual and auditory elements of video can influence a viewer's behavior to a far greater extent. Evoking the senses of both sight and hearing can spark subliminal memories of joy, sadness, anger, and fear. These emotional responses are what fuels perception and builds a stronger bond between the viewer and what they are watching, which in turn can greatly influence their decision-making as they feel more emotionally connected to the story. To adequately understand its effectiveness for the state, we must also appreciate its effectiveness effectiveness for the defense, and the case of Markeith Lloyd is a recent example. The 41-year-old murdered his pregnant ex-girlfriend outside her parents' home in Orlando, and many cited the most- Wait, hold up, what? ...motive as revenge. Look, you ain't learned yet, it's raining! Look, take me home. <laughs> <laughs> this man's still trying to speak. It's raining outside, y'all. He's still trying to speak. Look. Oh, gonna take me home. <laughs> For real, you're not about to kill me and the baby. This man, he has to be stopped. Somebody hit, stop him. He has to be stopped. This is ridiculous. I'm not going to live past 25. I'm what not going to live. Fuck? Not like this. No, no. I might as well pray every day. Make sure I make it into the 24 year old mother of two was shot eight times in her torso legs and right foot her younger brother was also shot three times but managed to survive markeith went on the run and just under a month later gunned down 42 year old police officer deborah clayton she had attempted to arrest the suspect outside a walmart just six miles from the first incident we can't do anything without you all letting us know what's going on so that we can protect and save our children from violence. And we also, the police is here to help you. We're not here to hurt you, we're here to help you. And if you have any complaints, just follow up with the complaints. And believe me, we will look into them, okay? So don't give up on us despite everything you've seen on the news, we're here for you. So that was the reason for bringing the cops and the community together so we can start having a unity, building these relationships, 
and trusting each other. I just sat in the car, it was cold that morning, and I was just warming the car up, putting water on my windshield. And that's when I seen Officer Deborah come out to her truck. She parks right in front of the store. And I was just sitting there and I saw a chick walk up to her. And I physically heard her tell her, the dude that killed that pregnant girl is right there in the store. He's getting ready to come out. And Miss Deborah, as she's walking towards the store, that's what I heard her say, hey, you. And to me, all hell broke loose. And I stood up, that's when I stood up when I heard her say, hey, you. And I literally watched Marquise Lloyd. All I seen was him run around the post and I seen him pull his gun out and they were shooting at each other like a Western movie. Miss Deborah, I want to say, let off about six to seven shots. I don't know exactly. It was crazy that morning. And Mr. Markeith pretty much was trying to unload his gun on her. He was really trying to get rid of her, like it was something personal. And then all of a sudden, I see Miss Deborah fall. I guess that's when she must have called. I got shot or something on her radio, on her walkie-talkie. She was on her back. And as I got ready to run over there, Marquise Lloyd just kept shooting at this lady while she's on the ground. Oof. So I'm looking at her body literally jumping off the ground from bullets, of course. He's unloading. He's, he shot at her at least five or six more times as she's on the ground. And I just took off running. I just took off running. Markeith would continue on the run for another eight days until he was finally tracked down and found in an abandoned house in the west side of Orlando. What the fuck? Holy shit. As you can see, he was just kicked multiple times in the face. He was permanently blinded in one eye and sustained both a broken nose and fractured jaw. When Lloyd was walked in front of our camera after his arrest, you could hear him say, they beat me up with his eyes swollen and a and no shit buddy what the fuck do you mean they beat me up eventually a bandage over it but this report from the state's attorney's office says that force was justified citing stand your ground it goes on to say that officers were nervous when lloyd surrendered and that he was wearing a bulletproof yeah right dude okay like there's a little bit of blood it's and fine he might i, I still think have a gun still... on him and that he might try to grab an officer like let's be real okay i don't think <laughs> I don't think they were legitimately worried. That's why they kicked him in the head, okay? They're just like, one, he killed his pregnant girlfriend, and then two, he killed a cop. Like, of course they're going to fucking beat his ass. I'm surprised they didn't shoot and kill him. Stand your ground. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, I mean, it's... Yeah, sorry, we were doing stand your ground, sir. <laughs> He's like crawling on the ground, dude. What the fuck? Oh, dude. Okay, look, 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 look. That's no. They were getting a. They were getting a couple in. Like he's a gigantic piece of shit. He. Gun. The footage of his arrest and injuries gained national attention, yet had minimal impact in the subsequent trial. The most significant piece of footage was the interrogation, and this was repeatedly used by the defense when addressing the jury. The police showed little to no interest in building the case, but instead subjected the suspect to as much discomfort and ridicule as possible. Yeah, I mean, cops are fucking pieces of shit. Like, they are. In this case, it's uh, a little bit different. You still shouldn't do it, but, you know. But, uh, in this case, it's like he, he killed his pregnant girlfriend and also a cop. They were led by emotion as opposed to their training, and this would work greatly in the suspect's favor later on in court. But what? Stop being such a sick fuck? What do you mean? Oh. Bro, how did this case, this case jumped from like, this jumped to like, I guess this is the, the cop killer, uh, 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 JCS. Marquise, I'm Detective Cadiz with Orlando Police. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. Uh, can you talk, can you sit up and tell me your name? We're here already, man. 
this this part of the the the, the story is already written. We're gonna move forward from here. You write the rest. But what I don't want is for me to give you respect and for you treat me like I'm a pup. You can't even sit up and look at me. Bro, y'all just beat my ass. I don't want to hear. Marquita, ain't nobody in this room beat your ass. You worry about how you feeling right now, okay? Well, tell me something, man. What goes through your mind when you think about your baby in that belly and not, not living anymore? That baby died because of the actions that happened that day. So you worry about you. That is going to heal. It doesn't matter how you justify it. Don't defend thuggish behavior by police. This is a disgusting precedent. I fully agree. They should not. You, no, I, I agree with you. That's why I said, like, it's just fucking cops are behaving like fucking assholes. Like... It's, uh, this is the kind of attitude that also allows cops to behave this way whenever they assume someone is a criminal when that person is not a criminal. You can't, uh, you can't play judge, jury, and executioner. This is a big part of the fucking problem with policing in this country. That's why we have, uh, these sorts of rules and accountability. Chad, Islam was shitting on cops yesterday. Where were you there then? Yeah. I mean, this guy is a gigantic, this guy's a fucking monster, okay? So it's a difficult instance to have, like, some kind of sympathy, but... Ew. That, you, you, you might get a scar. You, you know what? In three days, you'll be, you'll be eating fine. That baby is dead. You talk and all this oh, shit about how badass you are, but when the officers can punch you in the house on less guy, what'd you do? All right, man, we're all right, bye. You pissed out. So you, you get bye. confronted by a, by a, a female bye, at bye. the front door with your unborn child in her. What do you bye. do? You light her up. Sergeant Clayton's bye. trying to do her job and tell you what to do. Bye. What do you do? Bye. You hide behind a pillar and you light her up. Because you a bitch in body armor. For the first time in your life, a, a man just like you stands right in front of your face what and tells you the truth. Because in the street, you say what you want and mother don't do shit. Cause they yeah. scare you. I mean, I'm not scared of you. Here. I'm telling you the truth, and you can't handle that. You cannot handle. I mean, like, if you're not afraid of them, just you know, take the cuffs off. Like, let's be real. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is a terrible interrogation. I'm surprised this case wasn't thrown out, dude. This is ridiculous. Like. Leave it up to the fucking American Police Department in Florida to, like, still have, to still have, like, wrongdoing and fault in a case where they're literally apprehending and interrogating a dude who killed his pregnant wife and then another cop. Like, just leave it up to the fucking Florida police to still, like, how are you going to let this guy garner any kind of fucking, like, not even sympathy, but like, how do you, how do you let this guy get like an opportunity to even defend himself? Because a grown ass man like you, Miggy, is telling you the truth to your face and you can't even talk. You want a little freaking bandaid on your face. That's a ass move and you know it. You worry about the little blood coming from your face. You give a shit at all to that, that woman who's probably one of the, Truly nicest, biggest heart police officers I've ever met in my life. A woman who truly gave a shit about this community. Who truly got into this line of work to make, a, make the community a better place. So that's what I was going to say. Some cops, and I've talked about this before, some cops legitimately join the police force because they think that they can do good. Okay? Maybe throughout, the, uh, throughout their career they get hardened and no longer it can operate that way. But I love that this guy recognizes that and literally says, you killed one of the nicest cops who truly joined to make the community better, implying that a lot of cops literally do not care about that, okay? You're like, you killed the one fucking good cop. <laughs> He's literally just admitting. He's like, unlike us, we're fucking assholes, okay? You killed the one good cop. We're fucking assholes. place you ever and heard one bad apple this is the one good apple and you fucking killed her you shot her down like a dog because you're a little goddamn pussy 
Okay. Do you want anything to say to, to say to that family? Your mom. Huh? Your mom. Whatever, dude. You're, you're a little bitch and you know it. You want to say anything to that family? Do you want to say anything to that family? Dad, the big thing's gonna get some respect and you disrespect more. What respect man. do you deserve? You call a guy with a gun and body armor gunning down a pregnant woman and taking a police officer by surprise a tough guy? Wait, no, I'm not saying he's a tough guy. What? Where did I say that? Yo, why do... Yo, chat, let me ask you something. Do you guys like, uh... Like, you know you can watch the video on your own and then, like, act like I'm coming up with the uh, weird shit that I've never said? I mean, you're doing that anyway, so you might as well do that on your own. You're just, like, making stuff up. <laughs> Not chat, like, in its entirety, but there's always, like, people who just... will just make stuff up in the chat. Like, I can't believe you said you love this guy. I can't believe you said this guy is innocent and you love him. Kind of fucked up. You said they should take the cuffs off? I think that implied the tough guy thing? Yeah, I mean, they're shitting on him, but, like, also, he's fucking brutally injured and also is in handcuffs you know this guy's like portraying himself as a macho man I'm not saying he's a tough guy but a little bit easier to say that when you know the guy's like literally fucking dying in front of you and handcuffed you deserve the respect of any rabid dog on the street all right well go okay. on then. the fuck you stand in front of me for then the time right now is going to be... Open your eyes, Mark. Notice how I never said that he was a tough guy, though? He's a big, tough guy. Notice how that didn't happen? That's what I'm saying. You're, like, putting words in my mouth. Open your eyes. That was a true angel right there you put down. It was a true angel you put down because you're a pointless little fucking dog. Okay. How about not Am platform I killers and their motives for profit? <laughs> It's my favorite take, dude. Yo, uh, if you platform murder, people are gonna do murder, dude. Like, it's kind of fucked up that you're platforming murder. Hey, chat, murder is wrong, okay? Don't forget. Oh, what a take, dude. Chat will literally say anything. Any only regret is that you're breathing right now. Get what you got coming. I thought you agreed to put up a fight. You don't fear nothing. You know what? Beat this case. Put me in the street. Beat the case. Mm -hmm. That's what you gotta do. Beat the case. Beat the case. Because there will be another day. And you know what? Next time he's gonna happen, he's not gonna be Sergeant Clayton. He's gonna be somebody like me. Lloyd's attorneys plan to use an insanity defense, they say, but at the center of today's hearing was new video showing the moments after Lloyd's arrest that has... Before I watched JCS, murder rate was zero. Since I started watching JCS, everybody's getting murdered, dude. You're literally showing murder to 40k viewers. How is that not promoting LMAO? Funny how you just bend whatever chat says to your will. <laughs> guys, guys. One day I'll be done with JCS videos. Murder rate dropped to zero. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. That's, I'm sorry for promoting murder, dude. It's his defense that his defense says proved police were biased against Lloyd. This is new video that shows detectives dressing up a bandaged Markeith Lloyd moments after his arrest. And his attorneys arguing from these first moments, Orlando police had a prejudice against him. From the beginning of this investigation, the Orlando Police Department has had um, a focused um, anger and hate towards my client because of him taking the life of one of their officers. His attorney, Terry Lenneman, wanting to show the jury this video of an interrogation of Lloyd, who several times during the interview complained about his handcuffs that once belonged to Lieutenant Clayton being on too tight. The focus is on what my client's saying other than him begging, begging these officers for over an hour and a half for help and being ignored completely by them. 
and mocked and laughed. I have to pee so and bad. And other things. Breaking news right now at 12:30 here on Eyewitness News at noon. This is live from the Orange County Courthouse, where the jury's uh, recommendation. But I can't because like the fucking footage. Like I, I need to make sure that this footage is not shown. You know what I mean? There's like parts of it that might be bad. The sentence for this man, Markeith Lloyd, is about to be announced. We, the jury, unanimously find that the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a possible sentence of death. No. Dated this 23rd day of October, year 2019, in Orange County, Florida, signed by the foreperson. Markeith was spared the death penalty and sentenced to life in prison instead. With all the factors considered, it came as a shock to the wider public. Yet those who were following the trial closely weren't as surprised, as the alleged police negligence during his interrogation was drummed into the jury at the later stages. Had the jury simply been told of the interrogator's conduct, as opposed to witnessing it with their own eyes, the outcome of the trial may have gone different, and Markeith could have been sitting on death row at this very moment. Video. It resonates. That was an insane tangent, dude. This is a video about Andy B. And in order to justify, or in order to make an argument that, like, um, that videos actually end up, uh, you know, creating, like, a, like a much stronger narrative, he ran... That was like a 10 minute fucking break. It's longer than the actual video. How the fuck was he doing 98? Ah, it's the Toyota Hilux, I think. Driver, step back here to me. Come on back here for me. Come on back. How you doing today? Good. Come on back here. Keep your hands out of your pocket. Keep your hands out of your pocket, sir. Fuck sir. You, it. Here I am. My fucking ass. Come here. here oh no. Don't watch, you'll get banned. What do you mean? Why would I get banned? There is no it doesn't show the It doesn't show the uh actual fucking this is the video every cop watches that makes them pull their gun first. They cut the screaming out chat. Stop freaking out. How are you calling out a tangent for relevant info taking longer than the video when that's like 50% of your brand? Okay. I don't like that you just fucking called me out like that. Industrial havoc. Okay. Another part of my brand is running the fucking top of the hour ad breaks, though, right before a pivotal moment like this to bait you into fucking subscribing so you can have an ad free broadcasting experience. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'll probably wait. But regardless, top of the hour every hour, it's time for a 60 second ad break. You'd no longer want to see the ads. You want to ad free broadcasting experience? Important moments like this get lost sometimes, you know? You need to subscribe, baby. All you need to do. And you can do it for free. Yeah. You no, know, it punishes the poor, so we appreciate you waiting for us losers. Sorry, dude. Why don't you fucking slide on the indeed scale, dude? Make it slide the more to the more expensive side. But yeah, primes are free, or you can use a VPN or an ad block. Here's the ad break now. Now I'm gonna go pee while this waits. While this.
My legs are on fire, dude. Wow, that was a perfect one-minute piss. Oh my god, that was a perfect... I actually applaud myself for being able to pee exactly in 60 seconds. If his girlfriend was pregnant, why would it matter since you're pro-abortion? I love that people refuse to recognize this. Like, abortion is when you don't want to carry a pregnancy to term. Murder is when you are intending to carry a pregnancy to term and you want that baby and then you, that baby is taken away from you. An abortion for uh, forcibly aborting a fetus that someone wants to, uh, to, to carry to term is different than an abortion. Very cool though. Of course, the reason why people don't understand this is because it revolves around consent, a concept that people that uh, are anti-abortion cannot comprehend, and also autonomy over a woman's body. These are the two fundamental planks here, okay? It's a choice, a woman's choice in that situation. That's kind of the whole reason. I've only been watching for a day or two, and even I can tell when Chad is trolling you. What about the baby's choice? This is a human life after all. Yeah, dude. Totally. The baby's choice. Okay, let's keep going. Sir, come here. 37, radio 1078. Come here, sir. Sir, get oh, back. What are you calling, Sir, get back. Now, get back. Get back. Sir, get back now. No. Get back. Fuck you. Sir, get back. No. I'm telling you now. Get back, sir. Sir, get back. Sir, get back. I am a goddamn Vietnam call. I paid 30 euros to watch the stream on an eight-hour flight. If this motherfucker doesn't play Rust, I'm a freak. Don't worry, brother. I'm, I will. That's fine. Get back. And I am not sir. Fuck you. Sir, step back now! Get back! Get back! Get back now! He's not high on drugs, uh, Chad. He has uh, PTSD. He's on 100% disability uh, from the VA. He's a Vietnam uh, War veteran, and he is like, he hasn't taken his medication and having a breakdown, basically. He hasn't taken his break, uh, medication for the for like a super long time. Uh, so he's, he's snapping. That's what you're watching someone. 1078 means need backup urgent. If GCS actually shows this, then warning, the audio is incredibly horrifying and I'm someone who usually is not shy to watch stuff like this. 1018, sir, step back now. Sir, get back now! I'm actually surprised the cop didn't shoot him up to this point. 16. Sir, get back! Get out of the car now! Sir, get out of the car! Comes out, pulls his weapon out. I am doing my life! Get back here now! Brandon now pulls his rifle out of the car for a split second. Just enough so the officer can see it. That's the radio vehicle! Put the gun down! Well, I got me out the gun! I need help! Put the gun down! Brandon has purposefully let the officer know he is armed, and has now stuck his head up in the line of fire twice. The officer is well within his right to shoot at this point, and Brandon would know this. In the next moment, he will jerk his head up in an abrupt manner as if he's about to fire, but doesn't. Put it down now! He now keeps his head in the line of fire for over 10 seconds while disobeying the orders to drop his weapon. One could safely assume that he is trying to commit suicide at this moment. Put the gun down! 
Now, you will see Brannon get into a tactical firing position. Unlike before when he kept his head stationary, he will abruptly move in a sporadic motion, making himself a harder target. It's as though something switches in his mind, and he goes from wanting to die to trying to kill. Drop the gun now! Fucking Christ, dude. He's like, he's literally dodging bullets, dude. That's insane. It gave the jury. They don't show him. The full clip apparently has his like actual death rattles, basically. Chat, that's not fucking, that's not training, okay? He's jiggle peeking and shit. That's like, that's not military training. That's going to Vietnam is different than getting like actual training to be a good shooter. Okay. That's fucking, you've survived war. That's what that is. He's running around like a fucking rainbow six, uh, uh, rainbow six player strats. That's it. That's like different than just like, that's different than just like literally getting uh, a proper training. The, um, from what I understand, uh, what people are saying, dude, this triggers me so much. Like whenever people say like, uh, you stole my joke. No, no, dude, the joke that you came up with was not all that original. You know why I know that? Because I came up with it as well. And I'm an unoriginal ass. Okay. Stop thinking that like I steal every fucking joke from chat. After a while, we come to the same fucking humor and same conclusions because you, we literally spend 11 hours every day together. Okay. Anyway. As I was saying. That is like, why not call that cop a bastard? He handled that way too passively, got him killed. No, I think that cop wasn't being a, a, an asshole at all. Like he was, he was actually doing the right thing. Except. Just like seeing psychopathic murderers and rapists should not change my convictions about how we should still focus on rehabilitation over incarceration. Seeing a cop do the right thing and get murdered by someone who literally is experiencing like an actual uh, snapping moment, a, a psychopathic breakdown, does not change the reality that like in 99.9% .9 of the situations, Cops should be reacting that way because, and trying to de-escalate because the other person is not going to be a fucking Vietnam war veteran who hasn't taken their, uh, uh, you know, taken their medication. That video was sampled in a song called, I just killed a cop. Now I'm horny by JPEG mafia. It's actually a good song. And even in that situation, there's like, he should have de-escalated. I know that most people look at that and go, the cop should have shot him immediately. The cop should have shot him immediately. Okay? There is a point that he should have shot, which is when he pulls out his gun. He knows he pulled out his gun. That's the point where it's like, it's fair play at that. It's fair game. Okay? But leading up to that point, there are still multiple things that a cop can do to try to de-escalate the situation. Not yelling at the guy, who is clearly in like a... Uh, in, like, not the appropriate mental. What? Quit talking over veteran voices? Honestly, they go through so much shit uh, on home by every institution. When they come back, they have a hard time getting medical therapeutic help, and a lot of them get diagnosed with terminal cases of being unable to avoid the ads. I already ran the ad. That's the worst part. Like, I ran the ad already.
That was fucked up, dude. That was actually fucked up. That was worse than anything I've done so far, okay? That was literally worse than my ad segues. I usually don't transition on, like, a serious note like that, okay? Jesus fucking Christ. That's my Joker moment. I, this is where I snap. tunnel vision focus on the tragic demise of a police officer, while the origins of a soldier's psychological undoing were driven into the dark and out of sight. Nearly 15 years later, on January 13th, 2015, the state of Georgia executed Andrew Brennan by lethal injection. He was- Like, Andrew Brennan is a perfect example of someone who could absolutely be rehabilitated, okay? Like- I hate to say this because I, I mean, I don't hate to say it. I, I'm just going to say it with my entire chest, actually. That motherfucker should not be murdered by the state. No shot. That dude is 100%, 1,000% the type of person who could very easily be medicated and rehabilitated. The state broke his brain. They sent him out to become a fucking murderer, a war machine. Then... They, they medicated him appropriately. He fucked up or forgot to take his medication. He snapped and then the state took his fucking life. That's crazy. Honestly, there is a lot of joke made out of terrible shit in his stats. Sometimes kind of feels a bit dehumanizing sometimes. What makes this situation so different from the guy with the brain bleed? Because it's not real! Because that wasn't real! You literally missed the point of the guy with the brain bleed, okay? Why do we have empathy for one and not the other? They both killed cops. Genuine question. A lot of people in this chat don't give a fuck that the cop died. You dumbass. You dumbass. You literally hyper-focused on that guy killing a cop and forgetting that, like, you're so stupid. Like, it, you're missing the point. That entire video was about how... The, the physiological problems that that person was encountering were not the real reason why he engaged in the actions that he engaged in. Oh my fucking God. This is quite literally not rust. was 66 years old. His last words were, I extend my condolences to the Dinkheller family. He still murdered a person. Oh shit, never mind, dude. If you murder a person, you should get murdered. Actually, some of you literally believe that, which is why I should not let that hanging. That's fucked up. If murder is wrong, and it is, then the state should not do it. Okay? especially Kyle's parents and his wife and his two children. I am proud to have been able to walk point for my comrades and pray that the exact same thing does not happen to any of them. I'm glad to be getting out of this place. fucking watching another one of these videos. Not even Ted Bundy should just be in prison forever? What? No, 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 no. There's no capital punishment, but, like, Ted Bundy should be fucking away from people. Like, it's very clear that he ran away from prison and murdered people. Like, that's... Yeah, you... There are... I admit, there are people who you have to keep away forever.
skip two days of rust so we could have to farm and just could log into guns? No, dude, that's not true. Holy fucking shit, dude. The Kyle Dinkeller thing happened in my hometown in Dudley, GA. It's legit a town of 400 people. I snuck into his compound after when I was like 14 years old. That shit was insane. There were tunnels all through the woods and sniper towers everywhere. Dude was clearly not living in reality. You're the guy on my roast team who skips the wipe day.